What's up, everybody? I'm back with another Warhammer 40,000 book review for all of you. And I'm actually pretty excited to cover this one, as I actually received this book as a Christmas gift last year from my little brother. And I finished it in, I want to say, a few days at the most. Either way, I gotta say this, he picked a very good book out, and I'm excited to tell you all about it. So today, we are going to be covering Steel Tread, an Astra Militarum novel by Andy Clark. So, let's get into it, shall we? So, normally I don't really focus too much on the timeline of these Warhammer books. I essentially just pick a book at random and just roll with it. But I feel like this needed to be addressed in here of where this falls in the canon timeline. And apparently this is after the fall of Cadia. Reason how you can find this out if you're a Warhammer 40k lore follower. Essentially, this takes place post the fall of Cadia, and you can realize this when they keep on mentioning the Great Rift, which essentially is just where the galaxy is now divided in half, with this massive hole in reality, this massive tear in reality that is just the warp itself, essentially dividing the whole entire galaxy in half. I'm not sure which side of the galaxy this took place in. However, just this one alone can work as a very well isolated story. And it makes it a little bit less confusing, in my personal opinion. But I figured I just wanted to point that out. So, this whole novel takes place on the world of Croatos from the viewpoint of Hadia Etzel, whom is essentially put in charge of a tanker crew with an Akkadian regiment. Now the reason why this is important is because this takes place after the fall of Cadia, so essentially the Akkadians now share a similar storyline with the Tanith first and only from the Gaunt's Ghosts storyline. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, realizing that parallel was pretty fascinating, especially how the Cadians feel about it, because they are now forced to watch as their race essentially is doomed to just fall out and die as they are now the last of a dead world, and there is no home for them to return to. But the Cadians are prided as being the most numerous in the Imperial Guard regiments, so for them, they have a lot of pride in that. And their pride is constantly being blown due to the fact that they now have to accept all the world companies within their regiments, essentially to fill out the ranks. So essentially, it comes down to a culture clash within this book, and that was actually fascinating. It was different to see how you have these off-worlders versus Cadians, and the Cadians are not appreciative of the fact that they are essentially doomed. So this whole campaign revolves around the planet of Croatoas, and they are up against whom they know as Baragor, who at first I thought was going to be like a demon prince of Nurgle or something like that from the way they were describing him, but as it turns out, it was actually a Chaos Space Marine. And when I found out, I'm like, Oh, they are going to die horribly. And they did. Well, a good chunk of them, except for our main protagonists, I should say. They just had the devil's luck, I guess. But Hadia is forced to contend with the fact that her crew is essentially divided between off-worlders and Cadians, each with their own unique personalities, and traits, and backgrounds. And she has to learn to work with them whilst also struggling with her own survivor's guilt and post-traumatic stress disorder from when she was forced to retreat during a very nasty campaign where her commanding officer was killed and she was forced to drive the tank as it, this thing was burning from the enemy forces before being overwhelmed and this honestly was just a bit of a dark book to read but in all honesty, this is a very interesting read because my father, who is ex-military now, 
was actually part of an armor crew in his career. So this actually gave me a little bit of an interesting perspective to see how that would have possibly worked. But all in all, I like how the story branched out between first it was just a regular meet the troops, learn to know these characters, see how they function. It brings them into the main battle and these guys are up against some crazy odds. From not just the forces of chaos, but they have turncoat regiments against them. They have the chaos space marines, as I mentioned. They even have a chaos titan, a ginormous mech that really comes into play in the second part of the book, or I could, as you could say, the second act. And good lord, that chaos titan, the way they described it, was horrifying. So. After their regiment is completely decimated, Etzel and her crew are essentially now in this whole being chased, kind of being pursued by this Chaos Titan. And you see how they are trying to survive out in the middle of no man's land, within enemy lines, trying to regroup with their regiment and prepare a counterattack. And this whole entire time, tensions keep on rising, rising between the crew, whilst also being hunted by the Chaos Titan, and man, that made for some really engaging reading, only to wind up regrouping with the regiment, and then going into the final stretch, the final battle, which I feel is pretty much common in Warhammer books, but at the same time, it still works with how engaging the writing is. Like Andy Clark really does a fantastic job of making sure that you are engaged with these characters and that it's not just one person from the first person perspective. In fact, every Warhammer book I've read usually has like a third first person perspective, which keeps things fresh despite how many I've read as of now. So that final battle is where they essentially assault a massive fortress to retake the world. And man, the scale was insane. It was essentially like a full fledged assault against an armored fortress, a massive city fortress, and they're just pumping in through wave after wave of enemies with their armor crew, essentially forming a spearhead right into the center of it, before they're almost overwhelmed by the Chaos Marines essentially calling in reinforcements, and just, whew. I will say this to you guys, it was a very engaging read as far as I was concerned. But also because the Astrum and the Tarum are essentially just a bunch of regular men and women who are up against all these insurmountable odds, it's actually pretty damn inspiring, especially seeing how Etzel and her crew works around their issues and learns to work together. And it's essentially how the Cadians actually learn how to trust her and essentially accept her as their commanding officer, as well as part as well as an unofficial Cadian. I gotta say this right now, you guys. It was a really fun read. And I would actually recommend this if you just want a single standoff novel. But anyways, you guys, I'm rambling. I'm sorry. Let me go ahead and see what I would give this as a score for book-wise. So all in all, I would give Steel Tread as a whole a solid 9.5 out of 10 for being both a very engaging book, very action-packed, as well as a very standout novel for not only dealing with the regular foot soldiers, but actually bringing into perspective that of an armor or tank crew. Which I gotta say, that really changed things up, and that makes this one stand out more among the many Astra Militarum books. And I honestly cannot wait to see what else I can get my hands on in my growing collection of Warhammer books, but this one will stand as a proud addition to it. All in all, you guys, I would definitely recommend checking this out. Again, thank you all for listening to this crazy man's ramblings. And this is Rambling Collector, signing off. I'll see you in the next one.